In this insightful video, Dr. Van der Kolk explores the deep impact of trauma on our relationships, sharing important insights and helpful suggestions for healing and staying healthier relationships. And I was reading in your work the importance of human connection at making us, I guess, generally more resilient, but in many ways insulating us from the likelihood that a traumatic event is going to leave a chronic imprint inside yeah, us. I think it's, it's, insulate is a bit of an extreme word here. Okay. Uh, it helps. It's, uh, it makes a significant contribution. Yeah. But insulate is too total a word. But overall, when you're a kid, for example, and you need to go through an operation or uh, terrible things happen to you, and your parents are there for you and acknowledge it, then that kid is likely to be okay. Yeah, It's true that people are beginning to, it, the concept gets inflated. Uh, and people pin too much on trauma. Also in some ways, at the same time, uh, uh, trauma is a very real issue. Uh, let me give you an example. I, I live in a county in the mountains of western Massachusetts and they gave a big public talk and after the school principals of this area invited me to meet with them and they say can you set up a, a clinic for traumatized kids and I asked them so many how many of the kids in our county see domestic violence witness people overdosing on drugs uh, uh, get beaten up at home and the school principals said about half of our kids. And my response then was, then you should not have a clinic for traumatized kids. You should have a school system that helps traumatized kids, which is at least at half of your population, to really learn to regulate their bodies and to, and to, you need to have a trauma informed school and not treat it as an individual problem because it's largely social problems. And so once you understand trauma, you change the workplace, you change your schools, you change your hospitals, and you really start paying more attention to the issue of individual safety and agency to help people to function. Yeah. Now with the term trauma, I think most of the public would understand intuitively if someone's been to war, let's say, we would say that's a traumatic experience. Yeah. But what about something that I think pretty much anyone who's ever been in a relationship will experience something like this at some point when their partner says something to them that may well be on the surface quite trivial, but for some reason, the other partner disproportionately reacts. Maybe they're being reminded if when a parent criticized them when they were five years old and when their partner says something, it isn't about what the partner said, it's about the feeling that evokes, very very similar right. to what you just mentioned, right. that right. happened when you were a child. Can we say that is trauma as well? Well, no, I would say it's part of the experience, but I'm glad you brought us up uh, this example because you know, about a third of all couples engage in violence, violent interactions. Huh? So uh, a lot of people carry a lot of trauma and in relationships it comes out. And uh, in, once you get become intimate with somebody else, you live with that triggered behavior. And some things may be extremely upsetting for your partner who may become very angry or shut down in response to things that you have no, no idea what was so awful about it. And at that point, once you become trauma sensitive, you can go like, oh, my partner is not being just being nasty, mean and horrible. My partner gets upset by something that has very little to do with me. Mm. And then you can really sort of take a step back and say, honey, let's go for a walk before we uh, address this or let's play some tennis together or let's uh, sit in this for a moment or talk to somebody who else about what's going on here so you get the heat of the situation uh, you you decrease the heat of what's going on but it happens in relationships all the time of course yeah in fact in my experience at least I see this playing out in people's close personal relationships all the yeah. time. It's right. 
Of course, it could be about what's happening in their relationship, but in my experience, it's very rarely about what happened in that right. moment. It's what that right. is making that other person feel. Right. Yeah. Um, which is why I think your work is so important, both for yeah. people who have experienced trauma, but also for people who want to help their loved ones who have been traumatized. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and indeed, it comes out in intimate relationships. Most people are, are able to uh, to organize themselves pretty well under in neutral conditions. And for example, I have no idea that whether you become violent in your personal relationships or not, and you don't know that about me, because we don't have the sort of relationship where we will get triggered about these very core issues. And it's not until you really negotiate very complex issues about that happens in close relationships that these issues come out. Uh, uh, so uh, it gets it gets contained within relationships, and I keep urging my colleagues who do outcome studies to always not only ask people themselves but uh, how they react, but ask their spouses or their loved ones, because they oftentimes can be say more about people's irrational reactions. Yeah. Dr. Bessel van der Kolk reminds us that healing from trauma in relationships begins with understanding and acknowledging the impact. Cultivate empathy create safe spaces for open communication, and embark on a shared journey toward resilience and connection. Don't miss out. If you found this video valuable, hit that like button, subscribe for more empowering content, and ring the bell to stay updated on our transformative journey.